Good evening, everyone. My name is Chris Cooper, known as the Channel Guy Trader, and I am reporting to you live from Wall Street Trading Satellite Office down in sunny South Florida. Today's date is Wednesday, November the 7th, 2012, and here is today's After the Bell Market Summary. Well, guys, hope you guys uh, were able to capitalize on, capitalize on this downside action we had in the markets today. If you uh, if you weren't able to capitalize on the downside, hope you manage your risk accordingly and got out your long positions if you were long and they uh, were going against you. Let's go ahead and take a look at the markets to see what the markets did here on the Dow Jones. The Dow Jones was down 312.95 points, call it 313. The Nasdaq was down 74.64, and the S&P 500 was down 33.86 points. Out of these three, they were kind of really basically down you know around, around the same amount the Dow Jones was down 2.36 percent the uh, Nasdaq was down 2.48 percent and the S&P 500 was down 2.37 percent if we take a look at the breadth though we had some heavy heavy selling today obviously you can see from the volume on the chart you can see from most of the stocks intraday there's this continuous selling throughout the session we did get a nice little bounce around the 11:30 time frame but then we had some more selling coming to the close and we still closed in the lower one-third range of uh, most of the price action across these across the board in the indices here if we take a look at the breadth we had 5170 issues declining we had uh, 1109 issues advancing on the NYSC NASDAQ and Amex so there was definitely just about a five to one ratio in favor of the bears just shows you that there was heavy selling across the board that continued uh, through most part of the session today so what I want to take a look at I want to start by taking a look at the SPY daily chart if you take a look at the SPY daily chart you can see here we're at the bottom of this yellow band support right here still hovering above the uh, still hovering above the uh, 200 day exponential and simple moving average which is around the 137 76 138 area but there's something important that I want to show you guys in this chart that is not good obviously you, you, uh, first of all you guys can see the volume down here at the bottom of the chart all right you can see how the volume definitely picked up to the downside today after you know we have been having low volume heavy volume spike we haven't seen this type of volume since uh, since back here when we had this little sell-off back here back in in May all right May 18th all right now for those of you guys that follow my analysis and you guys know I trade a lot of channels you can come into my intraday chat room and you'll see that we trade chat that we trade channels and we look for these uh, high probability setups and we know how they react when they do certain things and you know if you haven't been to our chat room yet the chat room is mywallstreettv.com the password is smart all right to log in though you want to make sure that you go to wallstreettrading.com fill out the form on the right hand side for the 14 day free trial and you'll get the uh, you'll get everything emailed to you to how to access the chat room and your and your free trial pass all right and uh, let's go and take a look at the spy chart so we have this level down here the 139 the 139 72 area this little band of support you can see that we did break this little upward channel that we've been in since back here in June all right and I'm zooming in here because we got some nice analysis and keep some key levels to watch with to watch uh, going forward and you guys know these little downward channels anytime they break to the downside all right any anytime they break to the downside they usually resolve to some heavy selling as there's a lot of people that have a lot of stops right here and it also usually coincides with a key price support level which right now you can see this one is this 139.50 area you can also see that we have a nice little gap right here as well a gap fill that, would, that could take us down all the way to 136 if we were to continue selling or call it 136 and a half 75 area or so okay now this key trend line sorry about zooming in out zooming in out here but this key trend line line is important for the fact that you can see how it was, it was being respected you know for the past two weeks how we were holding above it today we finally got a close below it and a com you know we still need that confirmation close below it but a trade through 139 um, tomorrow and holding below 139 would, would should definitely take us down to these 200 day moving averages right here around the 137 76 area the 138 area if we break below that then we're going to be looking for that 136 75 uh, 136 areas we do have this nice little gap uh, feel from the little gap up that we had back here I forgot what that gap up was from but um, looks like it happened on on um, August the 3rd here so in any case that's what the spy is looking like if we can get back above say the trend line and hold above 140 and a half and at least hold there for a little bit that, that will kind of give us a clue that really they may try to hold this bottom channel right here 
All right, but at the same time, um, you know, it's not looking good out there. A lot of stocks are breaking down. We'll take a look at a couple of them here shortly. Let's just run through these indices real quick. Uh, taking a look at the NASDAQ via the triple Qs. Okay, NASDAQ uh, remains uh, below, well, not remains, well, yeah, the NASDAQ remains below this key trend line that we've been tracking right here for the past two weeks. You can see it try to get back above that level earlier this week, or yesterday, I should say, and uh, last week was not able to get back above one, back above this uh, 66.25 area and hold, and now we have a close below the 200-day exponential and simple moving average. Of course, waiting for that, we're waiting for that uh, confirmation close here. But like I've been showing you guys in the previous videos here, we, this was this little range that we were training in right here before we broke out. So therefore, we're back in the range. That support that should have held right here is not holding. And if we continue to hold below 65, we should be looking for the Qs to trade all the way back down towards 62, towards the bottom of this support uh, range that we had right here before we broke out back here in August. All right, so that's what the Qs are looking like. If we can get back above 65.50 and hold above that, then that would be decent. But right now, holding below 65 is uh, bearish on the Qs, and it's not looking good right now with a lot of the big cap tech, a lot of the big, uh, a lot of the, a lot of the uh, large cap tech stocks uh, looking weak and selling off. Okay, so let's take a look now at the IWM. The IWM still hanging above the 200-day moving average, just like the SPY. So you guys know the uh, Nasdaq is the only one right now trading below the 200-day moving average. I did not I did not check the Dow Jones because I do not trade the Dow Jones. You guys you guys can take a look at that to see how that's setting up. Um, the IWM same thing here. You you guys see how the uh, you guys see how the SPY broke down of the bottom channel. All right. If the if the IWM breaks below this uh, today's lows, which is around 79.91, and holds below that and continues to get some selling pressure tomorrow. And then I guess if it takes out this little bottom channel support that we're using around here, around, say, 79.56, we can get some selling pressure. One, because we would be uh, breaking below the 200-day moving average, both of them, the EMA and the SMA on the daily, and we'll be below this little trend line right here. And the next support really on the IWM isn't to, like, around, um, we have some minor support right here at 79. We have some minor support at 78. And believe it or not, we have a nice little gap fill right here, which I see in my charts. Um, all the way down here around 78 and the 77 level. So that could possibly be a target if we continue selling. So keep an eye on that. IWM back above this 81 level and holding would be uh, maybe a scenario where they're just trying to hold it. They're going to try to hold it above 81. Something to keep in mind right there. Let's take a look at the volatility index. If you guys know, we've been on top of this volatility index since we broke out right here using our channel analysis, using the fact that we... Uh, Using the fact that we saw that the bid was holding right here and that we were, we were expecting this little tight price action back here. And we got that breakout. If you guys want to go back to check out the videos of how we were analyzing that, you could go to uh, to WallStreetTrading.com and look in the archives under the My Wall Street tab, My Wall Street TV tab on the right upper right hand side where we archive all our videos um, you know, to go back and look through and view them and see how we were analyzing the market. Now, we have our little channel breakout, which happened right here. We have our little pull back, our back test, our higher low. You guys that have been in the chat room, you guys know this setup. And now we have our run up here. Um, what's really going to happen if, if, we, uh, if we take out this 1969 level, that's going to be the trigger to go long since we had a successful back test that held and we see buyers still stepping in. And that should propel the uh, volatility index up here towards this 21 level um, will be the next target, which is two points higher on the VIX. If you guys trade the VXX, which is a volatility ETF, that should be somewhere around the uh, $40 level up there. Okay, and um, you can see this one's trying to battle through the 50-day simple moving average right now and the exponential moving average right here. Let's take a look at the dollar futures. The dollar futures, uh, you know, they continue to remain above this little consolidation that we had right here, which is above the 80.25 level. If they, if you know, if the dollar index decides to go higher. Uh, we'll be looking for some resistance around the 81.55 level. With the dollar index still holding up, I'm, I'm, you know, me and my guys in the chat room, me and the other moderators are talking about how we like the action in gold. As you guys know, I was trying to buy gold right here. I got out of it for a flat, a little small loss, call it a flat, and then it got gapped down. Luckily, I didn't sit through this. But then, you know, I just kind of feeling that this little move down here was just like a little BS shakeout that happened. And you can see how the buyers came right back in. And now if the GOD gets a gets above this uh 
I would say above this 167.50 area, we can actually get some nice traction on this if it falls through. And the reason why a lot of people are saying, oh, you like gold, GLD charts broken down. But let's take, let's go back and take a look at the weekly chart to see what we're actually working with right here. And what you can see what we're actually working with right here is a nice little uptrend in gold. As you can see, it's been going on uptrend since 2007 or even before that, obviously. Um, you know, I used to work at a pawn shop when I was in high school back in 03. Okay, and you know, me and my friends were buying gold when gold was three hundred dollars, four hundred dollars an ounce, guys. I mean, my friend he he bought he bought a gold chain for like two thousand, three thousand dollars when gold was four hundred four hundred dollars an ounce, and he still owns that chain. That chain is worth more than you know eleven grand now. In any case, it shows you that you know some things are good investments. So that's why you want to make sure you know what you're doing, so you know where to invest your money at. Uh, so in any case, here. I mean, the weekly chart of the GLD, you can see the breakout of our little nice little downward channel. If you guys recall, we were talking about this little this little support bid that was holding because if it was actually weak, it would have broke down towards the bottom of the channel, which it did not. All right, and we were holding that 152 bid, got that lift off. All right, pulled back on low volume. Look at the volume compared to the buying volume that came in. All right, and right now this is probably a buyable. You know, this is most likely the buyable pullback. If we could get, if we can get a nice strong close this week, I will be looking for the GLD to get back over 167.50 and head back up towards 172 half, um, 174 area. All right, so you can see how the weekly chart, you know, kind of cancels out a lot of the gap gap action noise that we have on the daily time frame. So keep an eye on gold. Um, the GDX is still shaping up in my channel analysis, guys. If you guys recall, if you guys have been watching the videos. All right, I've been watching this little downward channel that's setting up on the GDX. You know, it looked like we were going to break down on Monday. However, buyers are stepping right back in with gold getting strong. And you guys know me, Channel Guy Trader. This is one of my favorite patterns that are setting up right here in the GDX. I'm going to be watching this very closely to see this little nice little channel that we're trading in. And obviously, if you don't have these channels on your chart, you're probably saying, oh, the GDX is not a channel. It's breaking down out of the support right here. It broke the support. But look at it at a different angle, guys. If you want, turn the screen sideways. This is a nice little channel that's forming at a slightly downward angle. And this thing, if it takes out 53 and starts getting some traction, it's going gonna, it's gonna to get a nice little move higher. And that's, where, that's what we're waiting for. So you have your little up move. You have your little sideways consolidation, guys. Keep an eye on the gold miners. I like how the gold miners uh, are recovering from the little selling pressure they had. Um, earlier, uh, you know, uh, this week and late last week that they had got. Okay, um, what else? So GG is a gold mining stock. You can take a look at. I like that one the best. Now let's take a look at crude oil real quick. We're, we're going to go over a couple stocks here. Um, let's take a look at crude oil. Crude oil, USO via the USO, still looking weak again. Bounced yesterday, but sold right back down today off those oil off the oil numbers. And uh, looks like looks like the next target on uh, the USO is going to be back down here towards gap window around 30.53, then gap, then then the uh, actual gap fill around the $30 level here. All right, and we take a look at crude oil futures. If you trade crude oil futures and not the USO, all right, crude oil futures looks like uh, it still has some support around the 83.50 level. But if we break below 83.50, you're going to be looking for 80.77, which we have some support down there from this little band of support. Okay, what am I missing here? Let's take a look at the Euro USD. All right, we talked about the Euro USD uh, giving a fake little breakout signal. Let me take off the moving averages here so you can see the chart and the pattern a little bit better on my channel here. We talked about the Euro giving a fake little breakout signal. Kind of this, take a look at this guy. This is this is the uh, same pattern that uh, the GDX has right in our channels. So take a look. This this one had a failed breakout right here. Trapped some longs. Notice how we were not able to get back above the level right there, and now we're moving back to the downside. If we break back below this little bottom band right here, which lines up with, say, 127 uh, on the euro, we could get some serious selling. Next support, well, not serious selling yet, but the next support we're looking at for if we break that level, it's going to be around 126. Now, if we break below 126 and start holding, that means all this action is going to be a nice little bull trap, and the euro is going to sell, get some selling pressure. And, again, I'll keep you guys posted on that. Don't want to get too ahead of myself. But we have some, we have something stirring up here, and we're going to find out what it is um, in the near term. I'm assuming, as the VIX looks like it wants to break out, and the euro looks like it's vulnerable to sell back down. Um, so what else do I want to talk about here? So let's take a look at some stocks real quick. We usually go over the stocks in the morning in our chat room, but let's take a look at the stocks. Apple, obviously, a lot of people. Um, I guess that you know that uh, that love to trade Apple, that uh, you know pay a lot of attention to Apple. And they've been trying to buy the dip. They've been getting pretty hurt there. We're below the 570 level, which didn't hold up today. 
And uh, we noticed a weakness in Apple this morning pre-market, and Apple closed dead on closed near the lows here. And uh, next support level on Apple really isn't till 5:30:29. Now something to take note of on Apple. If I bring the chart back out here uh, to two year to a two year daily chart. Now I've been tracking Apple since 2000 since back here in 2010. Ever since I was able to draw this channel channel line. All right, and um, this is a little upward channel, guys. And the same way we have those little downward channels, like I said, that when they resolve to the downside, they usually uh, sell off fast. The same way when you get an upward channel, all right, that uh, doesn't resolve to the downside, they usually break out, you know, with steam. All right, because this should usually this should resolve to the downside. And what I meant to say for the downward one, if it doesn't resolve to the upside and it breaks to the downside, I usually get some selling pressure. I think I said that opposite. Sorry about that. So in any case, so you can see that uh, Apple is dead on that trend line from the breakout right here. You can see the volume picked up when they did break out and squeeze those shorts out that were trying to uh, pick the top in Apple, whatever. And um, if Apple does not hold around this 558, 557 area, we could see some serious selling in Apple, and it could come in this little channel area, which is going to be like a void area now, and it should get some, it could get some, uh, some selling. So don't think Apple's done going yet. You know, I'm not. You know, I wouldn't say short it now because you're kind of late to the party. But if you're an intraday trader, I mean, there's going to be opportunities to sh to to, to um, trade both sides of it. So just keep it on watch. Uh, let's take a look at Amazon. Amazon's hanging in there, holding this uh, 232 level. You know, I if it holds below 232 tomorrow, look for it to sell back down towards uh, 225 area, back down towards this little rising 200-day uh, exponential moving average, which is not even rising anymore. I mean, it's kind of starting to flatten out a little bit. Um, now, before I end the video, I mean, I have a lot of stuff I could talk about, but the video is already long enough. Believe it or not, I talk, I try to go over everything for you guys here. But let's take a look at the BKX real quick before I end the video. BKX is some of my proprietary channel analysis, giving us uh, look, about to give me a good signal here um, for the fact that if you take a look, you can see how this little red area that I have shaded was a key area from back here. You know, then it trends little trend line was not able to break above it, sold off. Then it consolidated in this little range right here, broke out. If you go back to our videos back in, uh, if you go back to our videos back into in September, you will see I called the breakout in the BKX right here off this consolidation pattern that played out pretty well. But um, right now we're at the breakout level. This is going to be the back test around this area. If the BKX breaks below 48 and holds below 48, all this action, guys, above this trend line could be a possible bull trap. We need more time to tell, but I'm definitely going to keep you guys. Um, aware of this right here if we break below 48 and we get some sell signals and then we'll be looking for a move back down towards this little consolidation area right here which is around this 47 area and you know we are we are are uh, already seeing some breakdowns in the uh, in the banking sector you could take a look at Goldman Sachs had an ugly day today sitting right on the 50 day simple moving average and exponential moving average in the daily and then if you take a look at Citigroup, Citigroup had an ugly day today, uh, getting a getting a uh, close below the 20-day exponential and simple, and the 8 EMA, 8 SMA, 50 S, 50 uh, simple moving averages of, of support is around 34.65. And the weakest one of them all, which could be a good short tomorrow, if the banks continue to act weak, because it has been acting weak, is Wells Fargo, WFC. All right, and this one's setting up kind of like the BKX. How the BKX had a little fake breakout. If the BKX breaks below 38, the first stock you want to look at for the banking sector to short is Wells Fargo. You can see how it had a little fake breakout over 34.50 back in the range, consolidated. This is my favorite setup right here, consolidated, and now got a close below that 33.50 level, sitting right on top of the 200-day, 200-day uh, exponential moving average, and has a close below the 200-day simple moving average. A break below 32.75 and hold should take Wells Fargo back down towards 32 and possibly even lower in the short term back down towards the bottom of the channel trapping everybody that bought above 34.56 and trapping anybody that's trying to get long for a scalp to the long side or whatever um, in this little choppy range it had right here all right you guys see that and you guys in the chat room you guys know how I love to play these little range consolidation plays whether it be to the top side or to the downside. So I hope you guys had a great day today. We had a couple of uh, good trades in the chat room. If you want to see those trades that we took in the chat room, you want to make sure you go to you, our YouTube channel, My Wall Street TV. Subscribe to the YouTube channel, My Wall Street TV. And we have all our videos there, our midday market updates, our weekend reviews, and our, um, our after-the-bell market summaries, which is what I'm doing right now. So have a great night, guys, and I'll catch you guys bright and early in the chat room tomorrow at 8.15. Cheers.